Hello everyone, Vicki Ashard here with Nature's Best Art. Thank you for joining me today. Today we have a lot to talk about. The first thing I want to let you know is that this painting, our roses and mom's drawing, remember that? And our several weeks of uh, painting it is finally finished. It's complete and I just love it. I love the colors and the shadow and the table. I just love it. I hope you do too. It's a nice fall, fall, fall colors, I think. Okay, so, and you know what? I, I did post that on my business Facebook page and I'm gonna learn how to um, post it on my community page on YouTube. So you YouTuber people that watch it on YouTube's my channel, I'd like to post, but I don't know how to do that yet. I wanna learn. <laughs> so I have to ask somebody how to, post things on the community. You know, when you go on your on the YouTube channels, you have like a home page and then the videos, shorts and all that. Then there's a place called community. I wanna learn how to do that. But okay, so what I wanna show you right now is on my big screen, I have two ball jars that I actually wanted to take a picture of this. There's a little glare up there, so I'm not gonna put it too far up, but I want you to see this. These are two, um, actually ball jars that um, I thought were all wooden that I bought at Michael's last year. And um, I like them as gifts, but I think the poinsettias look a little mucky to me. So I wanted to put my own spin on it and create something that's gonna be, you know, something I really would think that the people that I'm gonna give these to um, to uh, two different people. Uh, uh, so uh, let me point up now here to my workspace area. And I want to show you what I did with one of them. I already actually painted one of them and here it is. What do you think? I love it, don't you? And I love the uh, sentiment, uh, warm wishes. And we'll be talking a little bit about, you know, how I, I did this. And I want to show you some materials. So if you want to do something like this, too. And what I thought when I bought these, are, um, I thought they were all wooden. Well, the top part is wooden. But this part, when remember I showed you the, the Seasons Greeting one? This is what had Seasons Greeting on it and the poinsettia. Well, um, it was actually on paper, and they just put paper on there. But I used the, uh, my watercolor ground. Uh, first of all, this is called Watercolor Ground and by Daniel Smith. And what it is, is you can paint it um, on the surface before you start doing it. It'll cover everything. And that's what I did. So, and then uh, I used my paints. First I drew it and I'll show you how to, I'm gonna start my other one. My other one's ready to start um, drawing on. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. And so I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the process um, of, all, of all what I'm gonna do, okay? Now this, the, the warm wishes, I wanna talk a little bit about my, my um, lettering. Uh, first of all, I was going to just stamp it, warm wishes, cause I'm, I'm not too good at calligraphy. I'm okay, but I thought, oh, I'm going to screw it up, you know. <laughs> but um, what I did is I looked in my calligraphy book uh, that I have. Uh, it's by Ashley Gardner. And um, I saw that I, I really do like the way the, uh, the letters are in calligraphy. And so I thought I, you know, it, would take the chance. I especially like the S's and the R's. And Warm Wishes has both of those in it. And so um, what I did was I, and I'll show you, I'll sh show you in the next uh, ball jar that we're gonna be painting how I actually did that. But I thought that turned out pretty nice. And then uh, just to talk a little bit about my cup, I had a towel that had a cup on it so I actually outlined it from that towel. You don't have to, you know, do everything, uh, you know, by scratch. You can get something that you, you know, can trace if you like, because cups are kind of hard. But really, if you don't have anything, you know, if you don't have a cup drawing of anything, you just bend your lines, you know, on both sides, 
and on the bottom, and you want to make your rim. It was pretty, it's quite easy, it's quite easy. So, um, and then let me just talk to you a little bit about this. This is, this is the steam. Now you can paint it white, but what I used was, I have a um, thing called 3D Crystal Liqueur, and I haven't used it in a very long time. So I had to use my uh, drill, drill bit, bit chuck as a little, you know, to put my drill bit chuck in there and twist it. You might, if you don't have one of these, maybe you can use a, you know, a, 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 a pin or something if it's stuck in there. And then that, that, that got it out. And then all I did was, it has a really nice point to it. And all I did was I put it, um, you know, directly on my wooden... Uh, well, I call it wood, and there's a paper there, but, you know, my artwork there, and that was my steam, and I put a little paint over it, actually, too. I left this part, this, this part, added a ribbon, and um, just love it. I just love it. Now, this part here is, I talked about masking fluid, how you can preserve your whites, and then put your paint over it. I've, I talked a little bit about that in, my, in the Roses and Mums picture, but that's what how I uh, preserve that. Okay, so let's uh, get into our next one. And this is for someone very special. So, um, you know, I wanted to make it my own. And like I say, I thought that the poinsettias on the one that I bought was, um, you know, a little mucky. And... You know, I bought it at the end of the season at Michael's, and you can get things like 70% off. So um, I didn't mind um, just creating a whole new one. And I think it's very special for them, you know, the people that I'm going to give it to. Let me put this over here so it keeps real safe. Okay. All right, let's get our one that I started on now, which is this one. Okay, this is the next one. And what, um, if you have a wooden board or something like this, what you're, and you're going to paint on it, what I do is I, I learned that I have to put masking tape on here because you see how the white went over, and I didn't want anything on that part of it at all. So make sure you do that. I have my uh, rope up here that I'm going to keep, but I put it up there. So I used... Um, my my uh, Daniel Smith watercolor ground, and this is really really nice. I bought it on Amazon, and you know you can put it on surfaces like um, canvas, paper, plastic. I mean plaster, hardboard, glass, plastic, metal, um, and so it's a um, you know absorbent uh, absorbent surfaces. And uh, what it did is it just covered it. Now I had to do it overnight. And I had to do it twice, and because um, uh, some of the, the the poinsettias were showing through, so I did it twice. And I don't mind if it looks a little kind of ripply there. I, I think I might put a ribbon or something like I did the other one. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's see. Now, what I want to do first is I want to get my number two brush, and what I'm going to do is I want to paint uh, a wreath on this. And, oh, I want to show you, this is what this was my drawing for the cup one. See, I, I drew this, you know, and, and I was going to put, you know, like I say, the the, um, the letters here and, and maybe even on a piece of paper because I wasn't sure of how I would do the letters. But if you just, if you just, um, you know, try it, just try it, just try it, and then you'll, then you'll, then you'll probably be able to do it. And I'll show you what, what, how, how to do that. All right, now, so we're going to start with getting some water on our brush here. And then I'm going to start with uh, some burnt umber. So I want a background to this, but I don't want it real dark. And I want to make it look a little bit like wood. So let's see here. All right, we're just going to start back and forth. I want to like a wood look to it. So 
So wood is, has different grains like that and different lines in it. So it's looking pretty good to me right now. Get this a little darker up here. Like I say, it's right at the top. I'm going to probably put something. All right, so now I'm going to dry this. And I'm sorry that I, you know, I used my mic one time to uh, to talk, and then when I turned the dryer on, it wasn't. Uh, wasn't loud at all, but I'm not using my mic, so I'm going to dry this now. It's going to be loud, so you can turn it down, the volume down, okay? starting to make some of your Christmas gifts. I know it's before Thanksgiving, but you never know what's going to come up, I tell you. Yeah, it feels pretty dry. Alright, now I'm going to take my fan brush, which is an acrylic brush. I want it a little stiffer than my watercolor brush. This is a fan brush. And then I'm going to put some white on top of it. Now this white is my, my uh, Titanium White by M. Graham. So we're going to be painting on top of this. But um, probably not today because i got to put... Uh, masking fluid um, over some of my berries. I'm going to be putting berries, uh, you know, painting berries, pine cones, pine needles. Okay, let's see how this does. Okay. So I want it quite light because I don't want it to get too dark, but I do want a, tex a, a, a texture to it. That's what I'm trying to get is some texture. That's just what I'm getting here, just right. Okay. So that happened because there was like not a lot of water. I'm trying not to put too much water on my brush. But I do want it to blend in a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. We get a little bit more. You know, this is my white, um, where I put my white brush in this water completely by itself. I'm not going to put it in my other water. You don't ever want to do that because it'll make the other uh, colors look too cloudy. I want to see if I can get it right here. There we go. A little bit more. Good. A little bit more texture. Great. Okay. That's great. That's great. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush here with the other uh, white and I'm actually also going to use a different part of my towel and this is just going to be for that white color okay I'm gonna, and I always like to put my white on a tile instead of in in any part of my palette totally separate okay now I got to dry this again 
going to get rid of any white on my hands or this part here. All right. And this one I did, I don't know if I told you that already, but I did put the masking tape on it. I'll show you the, um, this is the masking tape that I took off from the other ball jar that I painted. And you can see where it went. And it would have gone on the side here. So it was just, it's just a protection. Or if you have painter's tape, you can use that. take my ruler and I'm going to mark let's see I have to make up some more paint because I'm going to use burnt umber on, on what I'm going to be doing I'll show you in a minute I'm going to have to mix more of my paint up here it seems like I I put so much paint I don't know if, if any of you other artists do that too it seems like it needs so much paint all the time when I put it in my palette, but that's okay. That's what it's there for. Yeah, I just keep adding more paint, more paint, more paint. Oh, I wanted to show you something. Do you remember? Can you see this from here? Let's see. This this color here. I'm gonna tip this. See that kind of blue green color there? That big in my palette. Um, just a second. Well, do you remember when uh, we were working on the mums and the, the rose and the mums picture? Uh, I, I had said that I wanted to use that. Well, I did for that cup. Uh, and uh, I, I really liked it. Okay, so I dried this. And now I made my uh, more of uh, my burnt umber. I'm going to pick up my acrylic another acrylic brush because they're stiffer and I want to make this look like it's like on a uh, you know a wooden like board or something so in order for me to do that let's see how I'm going to do this here start with that I could or I could have my my smaller Three, six, five, four, three, two, and then one up there. Or I could go up an inch here. Let me think about this. I'm sorry. Seven. Okay. Six, five, four, three, two. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So let me mark this here. I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute. I got to concentrate on what I'm doing. Okay. So. No, wait. I should have thought more about this. Okay, let's see. It's down here. I have to start here. And go every inch. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. So, I'm just marking the six inch here. Five, four. I'm going every inch. I want to make a mark. Two. So what I was doing is I'm going to have this one shorter here because I don't mind if it's not every inch up here because I might put a um, some kind of a ribbon or something. Okay, so then I'm going to get my T-square because I want it exactly um, straight. This is a T-square and it's very big. Now, if I would have gotten one after I bought this, I would have bought a clear, a clear T-square. This is like uh, metal here, and I can't see uh, particularly where um, things are underneath my paintings when I use my T-square. So if you get a T-square, I suggest you get one that's clear. But I already have this one, so I'm going to use this. 
It's kind of big and cumbersome, but I'm going to try to use it anyway. Um, here, let's see. So, all right, there's my one mark there. Mm. You know what? I'm going to start with this one. Make sure I get it straight up here first. Okay. I'm going to work my way down. I think that would be better. Okay, let's see. I get my burnt umber. I just want to make a little dark line here. You know, a little darker. Make it look like a piece of wood. There we go. That's good. Okay, here's my other line here. to have a steady hand okay and then my other line here just so that um, it kind of looks makes it look like the wreath is um, is on some kind of a, a, a wooden wooden piece of something is what I thought okay and then this one here another inch okay one more now I hope I can do this last one okay because it's kind of awkward because I hope it's straight but if it's not we can probably fix it yeah it looks straight because I got my t-square there it looks like it would be straight Okay, there you go. All right. So that's my lines there. All right. Dry ah. this a bit. Okay, now I am going to put in, actually, I think it would look nice if I put in more lines. You know, like wood has lines in it. So, don't want to get too much water when I have like more paint. Now, let's see, just keep it like that. Okay. It's okay, but I think it needs a little bit more texture, actually. So I'm going to do this. This is my fan brush. A little bit too much here. Okay, that's better. I like that because it's darker. I like it darker a little bit. But I don't, I don't want to get it too dark. I don't want to get, get it too dark. Okay. Let me see how this, if I do this a little bit here. These maybe lines get dark. Yeah, there we go. I'm not really hitting it. There we go. So these lines here. Okay. I'm 
All right. Okay, I like that now. That's better. A little, little better. A little bit more texture. All right. Now, let's turn this towel over here. I'm going to dry this. What we're going to do is we're going to draw our design that I want. I already drew my design, and it's this one here. It's a you can hardly probably tell what it is. It's a can you see that? It's a wreath, and so I am going to um, be painting some pine cones and some berries and some evergreen branches. So what I did is first of all how I did this is I put my to, you know, to know the size of, of how, what, you know, what size it should be. I put my paper on my ball jar here, and I, and I bent it like this, you see? So I would know exactly where I wanted it. So let's see if I can get that on there. Now, the next thing I should do is let's see i first put it here it looks like that one's centered but it's way over here i'm going to move this a little over here oh i know why it's because i i added these but i do want to get these in there okay that should work okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my masking tape because I don't want it to be moving around. So I'm going to secure it so it doesn't move around. Now, you're asking me, well, what do you mean you're going to draw your your design on what wait what it's not you know it's on a piece of paper okay so uh, what I use whoops what I use is um, this graphite paper here and by Royal and Lanecker the best stuff ever on one sheet you can probably make 80 designs before you have to throw it out it's so good I love it all right now, and I think I got it at um, on, online at Jerry's Autorama maybe, or Dick Blick's, or I think maybe you can even probably get it on Amazon. I think I got it on Amazon. All right, so when you use this stuff, you always do there's a dark side and a, a lighter side, and you put the dark side down. Okay, and it's going to pick up, and I just use a pencil. And then what you want to do is you want to just check it out first. Okay, I'm going to start with, let's see, I'll start with the berries. Okay, those are my berries there. Now, these are going to be approximate place where I want my berries when I go to paint them. So, yep, there's my marks. You see, you always test it first, right? You can see that, right? Okay. All right, now... I'm going to be placing my berries on this wooden well actually I thought it was totally wooden and then I went to use my uh, watercolor ground and I was lifting, you know, kind of looking at it and lifting it a bit, you know, the, the wooden uh, ball jar. Found out they had put paper on there. It was, it's, it's very, uh, very clever of them to put a print of, you know, their work, whoever did this, because, um, you know, they could make a ton of prints and then put them on the ball jars, right, instead of individually paint them of course on there i don't know i bought it last year so 
kind of didn't remember. I'm just putting, uh, you know, very, very minor things about my pine cone here. Now here's some more berries I wanted. And I love the way I make these berries. Now we're not gonna get to painting this image this week because what I have to do, and, I, and I'll just show you a few of them that I'm gonna do and then I'll end the video because, um, so you don't have to watch me put, but what we're gonna do is we're going to be putting masking fluid on all these little parts here. And then I'm going to be painting, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting these um, evergreen branches. And so I can, when I, app, when app, okay, I'm going to, well, first I'm going to put the masking fluid on, of course, like I just said. And then I can paint right on top of the masking fluid. And then, uh, and then, and then when I'm done painting, here, let me get this here first, I'm concentrating. Uh, okay, the masking fluid, then I paint it, and then I take the masking fluid off, and then paint, paint the uh, pine cones and the berries. And I'm gonna have, I wanna show you what, what I'm gonna, use for these um like their ornaments did you ever use this stuff it's uh called pearl colors c-o-l-i-r-o -L and they are um artist mica watercolor paint beautiful stuff um and so you can enhance you know anything you you want with that on your in your paintings But I actually bought that for a very special painting I have in mind. One day, I'm going to do it. It's going to be a really, really big painting. And I'm really excited about it. But, um, so I'm really excited to use it. Isn't it wonderful that you can trace right on your, any kind of project, you know, paper, this kind of thing. And I'm so happy that I I discovered that um, the you know this this stuff here the Daniel Smith watercolor brown because otherwise in watercolor it wouldn't adhere well to things. Um, so I'm glad of that. Now I'm going to put my round balls those are going to be my gold like ornaments and this one's going to have a sentiment on it also like maybe merry christmas maybe i'm going to put it here maybe i'm going to put it here but i think it'd be too little so i don't know i'm going to have to think about all that and let's see how this is going to turn out let me make sure i got all of it in there before i take it off there's my, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now the last thing I want to do is what I did here is I took one of these, um, I use these all the time for things. They're my yogurt cups. And it'll just give me, when I put my evergreen leaves on there, like, it'll give me, now it moved a little bit. I don't want it to move. It'll give me a little bit of uh, placement for those. Just going to put a very slight line around it. Let's see if it did that. A little bit. Let's see. I have to go a little harder on it. Okay, let me put this again. Okay. 
just so I know where to put these branches. Okay, and there it is. And I can take that off with my tape. Now, that line will probably be, will probably, there it is, see? That line will probably be part of the branches or I have what I call a kneaded eraser and uh, that helps to take some lines off that I don't want. Like say if these are a little too dark um, when I paint, then I could take some of, the, some of it off with that. Okay, now let's see what else I wanted to tell you about. So, um, oh, the mask influence. All right. That's what I have to do now, and I'm only going to show you a little bit about this, a little bit of this, because uh, it takes a little bit of time, and um, I can do that on my own, and then I'm going to, when after the dry, it takes 20 minutes to dry. So I take a popsicle stick, okay, and I stir this, and this is, uh, I mentioned this in my Roses and you might remember this it's called Pueblo drawing gum and then I take my a paintbrush where is it oh it's up here which one do I want to use I have two of them a very old paintbrush this one I what very you know very young or my children were young probably my children and the smaller parts I'll use this one and the bigger parts I'll use this one so let me just do this to let you know how you do it. You put it in your water, and I only have this container for my masking fluid. And then you put it in your soap here. This is just regular soap here. Can you see that? Maybe you can see that. Okay. And then you put it in your masking fluid. The, the soap is so that it won't go totally on, leave, get on your brush. But you know what, this is so watery that um, I'm not even going to put it actually in water or on my soap brush this time because this has gotten very, very watery. I have, I have to put this on my um, wish list. I have a wish list. Okay, so, because I need to get more. I'm going to see how this works on the surface. This is the first time that I've used this uh, on, you know, not my watercolor. I think I'm going to start here. And I'm also going to, just a second, put a piece of paper on there. I didn't think about this beforehand, but um, whenever you paint on any potty surfaces, you want to cover your um, picture so that it doesn't rub. And, and get your design, you know, away. <laughs> so, let's see how this is going to work. This might be so watery this time, that might run all over. Let me see. Oh, it's working well. Okay, good. All right, so, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this to the berries. And to the pine cones and to my balls and I'll have it all masked out and then I'll be able to paint over everything this is what you have to think about in watercolors you have to you know then I'll paint all the, the branches over everything then I will take my masking fluid off it'll be real hard and like should be hard in 20 minutes with my this is called a cement eraser I said it was a, um, uh, I called it a kneaded eraser in my Roses and Mums when I did that video. <laughs> but this is a cement eraser. It's really hard, and it'll take all this off. And then when it's gunky, you cut it. You cut it, and, it'll, you know, you, you just cut it until it, you can use more parts of it. Okay? So that's where we are with this. I am so excited. Now let me get my other one to remind you how it's going to look, sort of, painted. Here's my other one. I just love it, don't you? Now, see, here's where I put the masking fluid on this for my marshmallows. 
and then my dots. And did I put masking fluid there? I might have. No, I don't think so. These are that Norwegian look type of stuff. Oh, and I also put masking fluid um, for the candy cane, too. So, don't you just love it? And it's really nice. What I did is I found a pine cone, and I, you know, um, used that as my guide. And then uh, for this this one here, when I did my drawing, I have a little pine cone. It's cute. So, uh, I, I used that for this drawing. So, in the next video... Uh, I will be, well, here, let me turn this here. <laughs> Hello, here I am. Okay, let me push this over way over here so you don't have to, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hope you didn't see that. Now I'm pretty dark again. Let me put my light over here and talk to you. But, uh, so... I'm excited for the next video because um, uh, I'm going to uh, probably have it painted, hopefully. I'm going to do as much as I can. And i got to tell you guys something. I went to the eye doctor Monday, and I don't know if you remember this, but I um, uh, talked about how I couldn't see very well. It seems like I'm not seeing very well. Well, come to find out, I need cataract surgery in both eyes. And I came home and I said to my husband, well, I need cataract surgery and, you know, it's just going to be, I'll need another pair of glasses. I knew there was something, I, th I had a floater in my eye and I thought, it's that floater that's bothering me. It keeps getting in the way. But it's, it's, um, it's full-blown cataract surgery in both eyes. I'm going to have it done um, on the 5th of November and the 12th. So please be um, keep me in your prayers. And uh, I'm really glad. So I'm just so glad I'm going to get it done. I hope nothing terrible happens. But um, I heard the results are just wonderful. Uh, I feel very confident in my doctor. She says she's done thousands of these. And she says the number one question that people ask her when they get you know, when she's done with this surgery, is they'll ask her, when are you going to do the surgery? Because I asked her, I said, does it hurt? <laughs> and, she's, and so she reassured me that everything's going to be fine. It's just that these drops that you get, you have to put them in there for like a week or two at a time, two weeks, three weeks at a time, four weeks, I don't know, maybe a month every day. And so like three different types, that's going to be a little, <laughs> you know, different. Also, I can't bend down. For a while, and I can't um, can't go on the computer a long time, uh, so I will, you know. And I can't I can't walk a lot. What was the other thing? Bending down, uh, but all these things, you know, that I won't be able to do. Exercise a lot, you know. You can moderately. I, you're not supposed to do a lot, or oh, look down, right? Or or, or bend down. I said that right. Bend down or look down. Uh, too much. So I am going to be out of commission for like about a month because I'm having the, both of the eyes done. So um, I hope to get my, I hope that I'll be able to at least po post pictures up though um, for the next month. So it was good for you. Uh, it was good for me to, to be able to do this today. And, and I hope that you um, got a lot out of what I'm doing, picked up some pointers as to what kind of projects you want to do for your Christmas presents and, uh, or, you know, just projects at any time of the year. So, and I love to share with you and I appreciate you all so much. And let me know if you like this video. Okay. Thank you. And, um, see you next time. Bye-bye now.